Greetings, fellow clergy, laity, appointed cabinet, and bishop. It is a great honor and a privilege to share with each of you today the value that is created by the L3 loving, learning, and leading model. Uh, many of you serve dynamic, healthy, growing churches, and the rest of you would love to be one of those churches. As I think about that today, I'm reminded of a pastor who was beloved by his congregation. And each time he got up to preach, he offered a little prayer uh, right before he preached. And uh, you'll be comforted to know that I've offered that prayer today in preparation for this time. The prayer went something like this. Lord, fill my mouth with worthwhile stuff and nudge me when I've said enough. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Is there a second? <laughs> <laughs> so moved. <laughs> When I came to Clear Branch in June of 2013, I had the great opportunity to build on a foundation that had been laid uh, over the previous 17 years of Clear Branch's existence. Being a fairly young church and a new church, we were still in need of clarifying our core values, our mission statement, and our vision statement. And we began a journey together to, to determine what we believed God was leading us to be. We actually wanted to see not only what our, just our church should become, but we wanted to see what the world should become as a result of us being the church that God intended. That was our heart. But before we could dive into those deeper issues, we developed a, a deeper relationship together as well. We began by building a covenantal relationship to which we would be held accountable. And in that covenantal relationship, we, we simply laid out all the core values that we believe to be most important and central to what it would mean for us to be together as a community. Uh, only then could we begin the process of assessing the community's needs and the church's gifts and find the places where those needs and gifts might overlap and we might do ministry that we could develop and discern, develop, and deploy. The first of those key building blocks was loving. As we began the L3 model and uh, looked at what that would mean to, to truly love each other and to love the world, we kind of agreed with Theodore Roosevelt's concept where he said, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. We did that by starting within our group, and we showed our care and concern for one another by initially building a covenantal relationship, which in, included confidentiality and candidness, consistency and confession, kindness and commitment. We shared worship and glory sightings. We shared prayer requests, and this community very quickly became a group that was a get-to, not a got-to. It was a we get to be a part of something life-giving rather than we've got to be a part of something life-draining. We gave each other an A. We laid the possibilities to live into rather than simply the expectations to live up to. We decided we would focus on what we wanted more of and not just the things that we wanted less of. We decided from the beginning that we wanted to catch people doing right. We wanted to celebrate those uh, wonderful moments. The second building block was we wanted to learn together. And each, each month we read a new book together and we uh, developed a deeper learning as a team and then also carried that leading out into other parts of the church. It reminded me of a church secretary who would often give updates on their minister's health to people in the congregation on the bulletin board. And on that bulletin board each week, the, the, the sermon title would be up there and then a little later in the bulletin board would be an update on the church pastor's health. And one week, the church and the congregation was kind of taken back as the sermon title and the report on the minister's health got kind of smashed together. And, and the bulletin board simply read, God is good and Dr. Jones is better. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, we know God is good. Amen? We say it for years. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. But sometimes we have to stop and acknowledge that the church has not been all we're called to be. Where our own churches, where we take honest assessment and we began that process of saying these are our core values that we would aspire to, but these are the core values that we actually hold. And we had to be honest with ourselves in evaluating that. And, and learning together became very powerful because we, we learned uh, that our beliefs drive our behaviors. We developed a vision statement that produced a passion within our team, a focus within our church, and an impact within our community. The vision statement allowed us to do more than just simply ask God to bless what we were doing. But we decided that we wanted to be a part of what God was blessing. We adopted the Chick-fil-A mindset that it's about better, not bigger. For Chick-fil-A learned long ago, if we simply focus on doing better and getting better and serving better, our customers will demand that we get bigger. 
the final building block once we had developed a, a process of loving each other and loving God together and learning together and creating that culture uh, was that we would really focus on how we could lead more effectively in our church, in our families, in our community. We determined that a part of our success was building something that was bigger than us and would outlast us. We decided we wanted to do more than do church work. We wanted to do the work of the church. We stated our value was not in preserving the church, but in furthering the kingdom of God to the point that I literally changed the question for the rest of my ministry that I will ask people as they join the church. I will no longer simply say, will you support this church with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, but will you join us as a church as we use our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness to build the kingdom of God and further the cause of Christ around the globe? This commitment was not only a bigger and more emboldening statement, but it became a question that reflected our heart and our values. We set goals which were reachable but audacious. We didn't want them to be so high that they would never be accomplished and simply have a premeditated failure, nor so low that it wouldn't matter if we ever achieved them. We wanted the goals to be high enough that God would have to show up for them to be accomplished because our fear was if we could do it on our own, we might. To accomplish these bigger goals, it would require bigger involvement, and that would take time to build. And ultimately, we acknowledge the African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. To lead the church into this new mission and vision statements, we had to show practical changes to more than the letterhead and the logo. It, had, it meant that our budgeting process needed to reflect the mission and vision statements and our stated core values. Effective leadership meant that we would need to continually reflect, adjust, and do the mission of the church to accomplish the vision of the church. It also meant that every ministry with children and youth and young adults and men and women and small groups and missions and worship and older adults, every one of them would need a map, a ministry action plan. And that plan would have to be constantly re reflected on and evaluated, and it would need to be something that was constantly being adjusted. As I begin my fifth year at Clear Branch, I can see clearly right now how the foundation that was laid in those first two years through loving, learning, and leading together has prepared us for the growth that will take place in the years to come. I want to personally encourage you and your church to prayerfully consider the powerful impact of aligning your staff, your laity, and your ministries around a common mission, vision, and set of core values that can be discerned and clarified through common language, passion, and purpose. And that can be achieved through this L3 model. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yvonne. You said worthwhile stuff. We appreciate that very, very much.